Oh, sorry. Hey, Here comes Chuck. <laughs> still getting dressed. Fix your collar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chip, I, I appreciate it. Just feels I know. tightly controlled. I appreciate it. In a way, again. unlike his town meetings. Oh, God, that's all the other. Just We're gonna have a follow-up on that. Is was one of the? Uh, did, did you ask President? No, except uh, I think uh, uh, again I would simply reiterate that uh, it should be met in order to restore the democratic rule of law. Why hasn't the president seen it? Uh, I, I think he's a parent. Yeah. I don't have any general reaction to, uh, to that. Thanks, yes. Robert. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Medicaid is a big part of the health care mm -hmm. problem, and I think it's costing $300 billion a year, and that's a big reason the states need help. Mm -hmm. Last year, the state of Rhode Island became the first and so far only state to get a waiver mm -hmm. on Medicare, and of course, as a book. Medicaid, sorry, Medicaid. Uh, as it is, uh, they'll allow Washington to put a cap on Medicaid funding, and in turn, if they can determine eligibility, put limits down and reform the system. Allowing states to have waivers on Medicaid, is that something that's on the table with the president? Um, now? Let me talk to the health team. I, I don't know the degree to which uh, that's something that. Uh, uh, how much they've got involved in that. Obviously, I think you mentioned uh, Medicaid represents a growing, uh, a growing uh, fiscal component for states, um, especially in harder economic times. Uh, and that obviously is something uh, that has to be looked at and addressed in anything, anything that's comprehensive. Um, but again, I think that also strengthens the argument for uh, changing the way healthcare is done, and ensuring that it's done in a, in a way that's affordable. Again, not just for families and small businesses, uh, but for state governments as well. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Is it too late to email questions now? The you know, if you send them to me, I'll uh, I'll see what I can. How about Twitter? <laughs> I think there's more foreign correspondence than ever. Uh, Barack Obama, whether you agree or disagree with his politics, has caught the world's imagination like no president since John Kennedy. And as a result, I've gotten to make friends with a lot of people from Japan, from Korea, as you know, Spain. Um, what is it like covering the White House as a foreign correspondent? Do you think it's... I think it's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Is it is it hard to get a question in or, since since it's more not later? There's packing order and uh, they start with the first from rows. They are always occupied, so we are sitting in the back benches, and uh, being in the back benches is much more difficult to get up. It's the entire Sometimes. setting of the press conference. For example, in Berlin, when you cover domestic politics, yeah. there's a huge press room or briefing room, oh, okay. so everybody finds space. But it's yeah. really what you said about the pecking order. You, you really have the feeling that, um, yeah, there's a strict hierarchy about who's, who's first, yeah. first row. Yeah. So that, that to me was a, mm -hmm. a new thing to yeah, see that you have to assign seats and just a limited space uh, and number of seats. Yeah. How early do you guys usually have to get here to try to get a seat? Does that play into it at all? Or? Oh, well, it's, it's improved in the. In the mm -hmm. At the beginning, it was impossible. It didn't uh -huh. matter how early you arrived. Now it's uh, more a matter of uh, procedure. Um, uh, as uh, foreigners, uh, we have to submit uh, more data about who we are, uh -huh. and uh, we have to be escorted. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, we have to to precise that uh, we are not American citizens, and then uh, we are asked uh, for our passports to be shown. Uh -huh. Things like that. It's a bit more difficult.